In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will learn the equilibrium of coplanar force systems, wherein we will take a look at equilibrium of a two-force body and a three-force body, Lamy's theorem and equilibrant force. If only two forces act on a body and the body is in equilibrium, then such an instance is called as equilibrium of a two-force body. The two forces would be of equal magnitude, opposite in direction and along the same line of action. That is, they are collinear. Consider the following example. A frame consisting of three members AD, CE and BF is shown. Member CE is isolated and its free body diagram is drawn. Let RC and RE be the internal hinge reactions at C and E respectively. Since only two forces are acting on member CE, it is a two-force member. Hence, if the frame is in a state of equilibrium, then RC is equal to RE in magnitude, but is opposite in direction. Both the forces are collinear, that is, both are directed along the line CE. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Now, we will learn about equilibrium of a three-force body. Consider a fruit vendor holding a weighing scale, weighing apples. The forces acting in this system are the weight forces and the force applied by the vendor to hold the scale. Consider a light bulb hanging from a ceiling with the help of two strings. The forces acting in this system are the weight force of the bulb and the tension force acting on the string. If three coplanar forces act on a body and the body is in equilibrium, then such an instance is called as equilibrium of a three-force body. The three forces would either be parallel or concurrent if the body is in equilibrium. Consider the following example. A beam XY is in a state of equilibrium. It is hinge supported at X and roller supported at Y. Let a vertical load F be applied on the beam at Z. We know that the reaction at Y, that is, RY would be vertical. Since the beam is in equilibrium, hinge reaction RX would also be a vertical force. This is therefore a case of three parallel forces in equilibrium. Now let us consider the following example. A uniform rod MN of weight W one end of which is resting against a smooth vertical wall while the other end is supported by a string is in a state of equilibrium. The member MN is acted upon by three forces a horizontal reaction RM at M the self weight acting at the center of gravity of the rod while the tension T in the string acts at N. Hence this is an instance of equilibrium of a three force body. Thus these three forces keep the rod in equilibrium and are concurrent as shown. Now let's see Lamy's theorem and its proof. Lamy's theorem deals with the special case of equilibrium of a three force body with the forces being concurrent. Lamy's theorem states that if three forces acting at a point are in equilibrium then each force is proportional to the sign of the angle between the other two. Let's prove Lamy's theorem now. Let PQR be the three forces acting at O along the lines OL, OM, ON respectively and MON is alpha, NOL is beta and LOM equals gamma. Construct a triangle ABC whose sides are respectively parallel to OL, OM, ON. Then P upon BC equals Q upon CA which is equal to R upon AB. Produce BC to X. Now CX is parallel to OL and CA is parallel to OM. Using trigonometric relations, we see that an angle ACB is equal to pi minus gamma. Angle CAB and ABC are respectively equal to pi minus alpha and pi minus beta. Now using sine rule to triangle ABC, we find that BC upon sine alpha is equal to CA upon sine beta which is equal to AB upon sine gamma as sine x is equal to sine 180 minus x. From equations 1 and 2, 
we find that P upon sine alpha is equal to Q upon sine beta, which is equal to R upon sine gamma. Thus, we have proved Lamy's theorem. Let us consider the following problem. In a jib crane, the jib and the tie rod are 5 meters and 4 meters long respectively. The height of the crane post is 3 meters and the tie rod remains horizontal. Determine the forces produced in the jib and tie rod when a load of 1 kN is suspended at the crane head. In a jib crane, three forces are acting along the jib, the tie rod and the load passing through one point. From the figure, sine theta is equal to 0 0.6. Therefore, theta is equal to 36.87 degrees. Let P1 and P2 be the forces developed in the jib and tie rod respectively. The three forces P1 and P2 and W are shown in figure with the angle between the forces calculated from the given directions. The line of action of forces P1, P2 and weight W meet at a point C and therefore Lamy's theorem is applicable. P upon sine alpha is equal to Q upon sine beta which is equal to R upon sine gamma. Substituting the values of forces and the angles and then simplifying we find P1 is equal to minus 1.66 kN and P2 is equal to 1.33 kN. The negative sign indicates that the direction of force P1 is opposite to that shown in the figure. Obviously, the tie rod will be under tension and the jib will be in compression. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Now let's learn about an equilibrium force. An unbalanced force system, that is a system with a non-zero resultant, can be brought to a state of equilibrium by adding an equilibrium force into the system. The force is said to be equilibrium when it acts with other forces in a system to keep a body in equilibrium. In order to find the equilibrium of a force system, we first need to find the magnitude, direction and exact location of the resultant of a force system. The equilibrium of the force system will be a force of the same magnitude at the same location as of the resultant but having an opposite direction to that of the resultant. Considering the following problem, for the system shown in the figure, determine the equilibrium force. The force system is a general system of four forces and two couples. All the inclined forces are resolved along the horizontal and vertical axes respectively. Let us first find the resultant of the system. We will first find the summation of the forces in the x and y direction respectively. We can then calculate the magnitude of the resultant. This is found to be 78.54 newtons. Next, we will find the inclination of the resultant with the x-axis. On solving, we find that the resultant acts at an angle of 20.22 degrees. Then, we will find the location of the resultant. Let us assume that the resultant is located at a perpendicular distance d to the right of O. Then, by using the Varignan's theorem, we can calculate the exact location of the resultant. On substituting the values and then simplifying, we find that d is negative. Hence, the assumption is incorrect. The resultant therefore acts at a distance of 6.15 meters to the left of O. The equilibrium force being equal in magnitude to the resultant but having an opposite direction therefore is equal to 78.54 newtons acting at an angle of 20.22 degrees at a perpendicular distance of 6.15 meters to the left of O as shown in the figure. Let's have a quick review of what we've studied in this lecture. We first learned about equilibrium of two force body. If only two forces act on a body and the body is in equilibrium, then such an instance is called as equilibrium of a two force body. Then we learned about equilibrium of a three force body. If three coplanar forces act on a body and the body is in equilibrium, then such an instance is called as equilibrium of a three force body. Next, we saw Lamy's theorem and its proof. Lamy's theorem is an equation relating magnitudes of three coplanar, concurrent and non-collinear forces which keeps an object in static equilibrium 
with the angles directly opposite to the corresponding forces. Lamy's theorem states that if three forces acting at a point are in equilibrium, then each force is proportional to the sine of the angle between the other two. We then learned about the equilibrant force. A force is said to be equilibrium when it acts with other forces in a system to keep a body in equilibrium. The equilibrium of a force system will be a force of the same magnitude acting at the same location as the resultant but having an opposite direction to that of the resultant.